<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to A Long War of the Chosen 2. My name is Saiken and we're going to play on Legendary Iron Man difficulty on this complete overhaul of XCOM 2. It is month number one, mission number three, time to get our next engineer um, and get this uh, whole campaign started. Let's go. And here we go, right into the mission. We got six rookies with us, so it's going to be an interesting ride. Uh, we start without concealment and simply need to extract the VIP. However, since we're not concealed, this could actually be an interesting ride. I want to go alongside this building and uh, then simply take the outer perimeter to get there not going through the middle whatsoever what i'm hoping to do is to uh, avoid at least one of the enemy packs we're looking uh, to fight against seven to nine aliens and since we only have rookies would be nice if we wouldn't need to fight all of them. X, um, one word uh, two also changes the experience quite a bit. Uh, of course, kills still uh, yield experience, but there is uh, quite a bit of so-called mission experience, uh, which makes up for roughly half of the overall experience. Um, so. Even if we would kill zero enemies, uh, there would be a good chance that all of uh, these rookies would be promoted at the end of uh, the mission. Um, yeah, so, and that is the real goal of uh, this mission. Basically to get an engineer, but also to uh, get a few um, promotions for free. In the later missions, there can always be uh, faceless ones, to my knowledge, but maybe a uh, long war uh, of the Chosen 2 will teach me differently, to my knowledge. Um, that can't happen in the first month. Position confirmed. Solid single blue movements. I actually want to move up to here. Ah, misclick that one. My bad. It's not the end of the world though. We're putting up an overwatch trap. So we know they're probably within uh, the building here. If we play our cards right and just bypass them, we might be able to, to get around the entire building without triggering them. Rolling. Well, that's bad. One of the things that civilians are doing in Long War is soon as they see you, they begin to yell. Yelling essentially is an ability that has around, I think, 18 or 20 uh, fields spread. So everyone in this section has now heard that the civilian is, is yelling. And they will come to look at what exactly has happened. So we're staying away from the windows. Again, there will be yelling all over the place. Even more yelling. The civilians are completely panicked just by seeing a few XCOM forces. Good to go. On the move. Uh, 
Let's block the door. Yeah, and probably Edwin will find us here and we're going to have our first engagement very soon. Interesting, they didn't even need to spot us out. They were immediately warned. Very interesting. Okay. So are you telling me they are already triggered? No. So he preemptively threw a, uh, a lobbed a grenade in here. <coughs> okay. You learn something new every single day. Grenade explosions, by the way, um, similar to yelling, have a huge range where they create an area of interest. And within this area of interest, uh, essentially, everyone would know that something is going on. All right, can't move inside. Oh, that's unfortunate. So let's move a little bit closer. The rookies need to kill this guy here, which means we're probably going to use two grenades because, yeah, let's face it, we're not really world champions in um, in aiming at them with our guns. The aim is way too low. Although I don't like standing in the open, there's really no more room for us to position ourselves. Yep, that costed us some loot, but I'm fine trading that away. Still have loot over here, so it's not completely... Um, it's not completely lost. And the drone falls back, which tells us there is another pack here. Matter of fact, we know that there is another pack right there. Matter of fact, we now know there are two packs right there. So the one thing we don't want to do is trigger them. Disorientation removed. Um, there is a civilian up here. Which means we can't, uh, we can't go in there. Taking positions without uh, triggering either of the packs. Gotta be extra careful here. On my way. The timer is not the problem, so might as well just keep killing these two for now. Target eliminated. 
just need to make sure that we're that we're uh, m managing the the other two pots uh, very well. So three more uh, shots. We got a grenade as a backup. Another grenade here. So might as well reload and take normal shots. We should be able to kill the zombie. What? Why are we not seeing it? <sighs> Frag out. All right, it's down to two hit points. We're going on overwatch, which means as soon as it's moving, we should be able to hit it. Let's hope it's not going to hit us in melee because they actually hit quite hard. Grazing shot to get it down to one HP, right? Let's get some high ground. The civilian is going to yell, which is going to trigger Advent. Come over here. I want the loot, so even if we trigger. into cover aye, aye. we have 16 more turns and we definitely have two more picks I know they were just standing over there Next turn, we're going to take a move. For now, we gotta be a bit more careful. Of course, it would have been more effective to kill both of the sectoids so that the zombies would have died automatically. But that would have also implied we are uh, that we would have gotten. Uh, that we would have pulled all of them at once. Closing on target position now. So this is definitely going to trigger them. We've got here. Moving to designated position. Moving up. And interestingly enough, we do not have enough cover over here. We can get the drone down. I think that's pretty much it. Order confirmed. On the move. Heading out. I'm trusting you here. 
Okay, so for our VIP, we're going to take the high route uh, here. In terms of uh, shots, let's take the highest percentage chance target, uh, which is the drone. Getting a lot of overwatch, so if they really decide to come, we might be able to uh, take a few overwatch shots. Fortunately, the drone has quite some armor, and if we're not rolling high on the damage, it takes a while to destroy it. Alright, this should trigger the overwatch. We're soon expecting reinforcements, so I might as well speed up the process here quite a bit. VIP moves over here and hunkers down. This here is high ground. We're going for the trooper first and then for the sectoid. Okay, we should be able to take on uh, the sector. He takes a lot of shots. But we also have so many operatives that it should be possible to kill him. Yeah, there we go. It's almost done. Reload, Overwatch, Overwatching. and another Overwatch. Maybe the other pack will even run into it. That fight was surprisingly smooth. So let's move up. We're almost there. Single moves and Overwatch. That's the name of the game here. We keep William Jones a little bit uh, back with one hit point. Uh, every single additional hit will definitely kill him. Maximizing the number of overwatches that we do have. Just got hot here. Okay. Roger. We are almost there. Reinforcements are now going to come in. So everyone should be on Overwatch. Heading out. Another advanced hair trigger, that's good. Order confirmed. Moving out. Affirmative. 
Affirmative. Moving out. We are clustering up quite a bit here. And after the reinforcements, I would say we're going to make a run for it. Still got one more pack, but the evac zone is already up there. Good. Time for the reinforcements to come. Six overwatch shots. I'm expecting a complete wipe. That's a hit and a kill and a hit and a kill and we even got two more overwatch shots left. Okay, no time to rest. It's one more blue move and if this here is not triggering anything... Well, it is. So let's move up and see if we can beat them. They are in full cover, which definitely is suboptimal. But it's the last pack, and if we get close enough, everyone can leave next round. Unless someone, of course, gets disoriented or other shenanigans happen. Carl takes an overwatch and we do have one, so one, two, three targets, uh, three people who could theoretically take a shot, 33%, we're at best hitting 30%, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce their chances. By doing them dirty. Overwatch and Overwatch. Was it a hit? Oh, come on. Yes, nice. That was a hit. Okay, we got an overwatch and we got a clear motivation to leave. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's double check that everyone can reach the extraction zone yes yes no but maybe if the others are leaving yes
Okay, William here needs to get out of as well one hit point. We can still throw a grenade to keep them disoriented for one more turn. If we wouldn't be able to leave. So that's the backup plan if it if uh, the rookie can't uh, leave. She should be ha have enough movement. So let's move to here. Flashbang them for one more round. Get completely out of line of sight. And we should be fine unless one of them is critically hitting now. Overwatch is okay. We may end up with more injuries uh, than expected. This here is going to trigger Overwatch, but we still have our uh, plating. And it misses. Okay. Overall, still an okay mission. Certainly, the last injury could have been prevented. We killed almost everyone. And got our second engineer, which for month uh, one is really, really helpful. So, well, let's talk a little bit about my strategy, which involves essentially doing a lot of missions at the very beginning and focusing entirely on scientists to uh, to uh, quick rush through certain um, certain research so that's number one number two do a lot of missions to get the maximum uh, amount of experience for our soldiers and basically number three try to compensate as well as possible for um, for a shortage in supplies. Our biggest disadvantage is if everyone goes for intel and simply scans for missions that we're not going to have enough uh, supplies. So that's a huge challenge um, but I'm trying to play well enough so that that does not happen. Another ranger here, another grenadier, Another um, Shinobi. Another Assault. We're looking at yet another Specialist. And a third Shinobi, okay. We got some decent uh, uh, PCSs. And we got a second engineer. So as for the engineer, I would say she excavates as well. So we got two excavations going. That will increase the monetary flow even further. Currently completely out of supplies. And for our roster, two assaults, two grenadiers, two gunners, two rangers, two sharpshooters, three shinobis, Pretty, it's a pretty even roster. Um, of course, with the GTS, we could have optimized the stats a little bit more, but um, we were lucky and had a pretty average spread, um, maybe a little bit above average with the um, with the uh, aim. Short of a few people like Kim Thomas here uh, with a really really bad aim, 
we actually have had decent um, soldiers all around so I don't mind having random classes there or quote unquote um, random classes we're getting the supplies that's a good drop for us we need them Seventy-five supplies. That's awesome. Wait until the guerrilla tactic school is uh, there. Can definitely invest the supplies. Could also consider. Let's shortly check the black market. We could also consider purchasing a scientist. It would be a bit extravagant to uh, to purchase a scientist on top. So it's 105 into. Okay. So let's say we're uh, selling. This year, oh, it's uh, 95. I like the defense, but I mean, also like a scientist. So we could go and essentially purchase another scientist. I think we're going for the drone wreck. Uh, I don't know about the alien alloys. We need them for some of the research. Can't really go to zero with them, but we don't need the drone wreck right away. So massive investment in the first month to kickstart uh, the scientists and the engineers. We bought an engineer and a scientist. That's also part of the strategy. Almost zero investment in the troops. I'll just compensate with good enough play. And everything focuses on the strategy layer because the strategy layer is actually quite difficult. And you can set up yourself for failure if you're not doing it well enough. Um, we will get more supplies here, but with the uh, with the scientists, actually a lot of our research will become faster, and our way to um, laser weapons will be even faster. So we're scanning here for new missions, in the hopes of getting maybe two additional uh, missions. Everyone is on Intel, so that's exactly what we want. We could put uh, the scientist. We could put the scientist here as an advisor. You can um, nominate an advisor, and you know I think we're going to do that for now until we find two missions. The scientist will further. Um, further increase the intel and see that's the, that's the beauty right there we got a nine days um, infiltration which is absolute phenomenal it allows us to get a really good well-equipped and large group uh, for a comparably easy mission got three resistance personnel so that would um, increase our um, our strength in the region uh, considerably uh, considerably and I'm going to build up the team and I'll be right back. And we're back. So, Operation Blinding Flame, since we have nine days, which is awesome, we can bring up a squad of seven. And I felt we're just bringing the Prime Squad here, um, all of the um, Alpha team members. We got Dark Tower Noxus, uh, we got Zirkim, Roby Renman, Edgar Alien Poe. Mitch Mitchell, the man with the mustache, and our new squaddy. Um, the, she was the one uh, that uh, had exceptional aim in the mission with a loss. So she's going to be the sharpshooter. Uh, she does not have a call sign yet. Let's see what the run is going to um, yield. I gave her a little bit of an overhaul so that she also gets a bit of a better, um, better um, texture. So we're going to infiltrate with that team, and if we're successful, we should be getting 
two resistance personals and a rookie. Um, as you might have guessed, it is not as easy to get a rookie in Long War as it would be in a normal XCOM 2 campaign. You can't just hire them. Uh, you will need to earn them. And uh, running out of soldiers is indeed a real threat. We continue to uh, scan here. Pretty sure we're getting a new mission soon. But first, we get the resistance ring. Look at that, covert ops missions. We might take the elders by surprise if we switch up our tactics. Maybe we should try some. Add a faction hero. Or add another faction hero. I like it. I definitely want to get the skirmisher. Gain ability points now. Let's go for the faction hero. So someone who could use hacking. Let me think that through real quick. Okay, Beck, I have taken the time to color code everyone and make them a little bit more beautiful. So we need someone who requires hacking, which is either a shinobi or a specialist. There we go. And he needs to be accompanied by someone else. Since we have a lot of shinobis, might as well give him a shinobi. 13 days, there we go. And let's move on. We still have room for one more mission, so might as well continue scanning. Six more days until a supply drop. There is the mission. And it's another scientist. Perfect. We really couldn't ask for more. I will fill in the uh, fill the team and uh, let's see what uh, we have come up with. Uh, that is a really really good start. Okay, here we are back uh, with exact uh, exactly a hundred percent infiltration. We end up with uh, essentially a shinobi um, and a sniper plus four rookies that are going to try uh, and free the scientist. With a shinobi, we will have enough. Um, movement to scout ahead. Uh, sniper is going to help us in case we actually need to finish um, off individual targets and the high ground uh, will be helpful. And yeah, the four rookies are there for promoting uh, reasons. We are trying to get everyone a class. Since the mission is still easy, might as well take them with us. We still have four more um, soldiers, which means I am going to fly down here and see if we can trigger another mission. We're short on intel, elsewise I would want to go for for a further expansion. Oh, nice. So that's enemy material. Enemy material essentially means we're smashing and grabbing something. Should be aware. We're detecting lost activity in this area. Our forces will need to be especially vigilant. And it seems as if we would have really used up all of our forces. One last check. Can we recruit someone? Probably can't. No, no recruits available. Yeah, which means we we will do the mission with only four. It's not the end of the world, uh, but with uh, so much time available, it would have been better to have a fifth uh, soldier, we would end up with 125% uh, um, infiltration, which essentially means we're uh, having it over infiltrated, but sin and, and it would reduce the baseline here. But since uh, 7 to 9 is already the absolute minimum baseline, I cannot see how we can do that any different. We, are, we have two soldiers on cover, uh, covert ops missions, and we can't take the wounded soldiers into combat. So it's pretty clear that we 
cannot um, field any more soldiers, which means this team here is the last team. Um, and now everyone is infiltrating and on missions. Since we do not need additional missions, I will do a bit of a micromanagement here. We don't need intel. Instead, let's everyone let, let's put everyone on recruitment. We have spawned all the missions that we can spawn, and we're going back to the Templar HQ to improve our healing rate for those who are injured. Oh, and by the way, the admin offices have clearly been modified. Nice, we got uh, armor penetrating rounds. We do not need basic research. Next up, we're going for hybrid materials. Um, once we got that, we should be ready to go for laser weapons. So one of the things that we can still do is uh, to speed up the research. We are taking the uh, scientist off again, essentially increasing our speed here seven days until hybrid, uh, hybrid materials are done. Another nice target. Oh, wow. A scientist and an intel package. Hmm. Let's take a look at the other missions. Here it's resistance personal. Yeah. And a rookie. Uh, so we don't want, don't want to give give that away. Here it is a scientist, and we're already infiltrating. A smash and grab. I mean, you know, <laughs> twenty five enemies. We could move in and try to get a few, just a few um, of uh, the crates, basically get out. That's a lot of enemies right here. I am not sure. If we could get a few crates and successfully do the mission. And then, plus, do not get injured. And then move over here. That would give us yet another scientist and an intel package. Five days, yeah, that would be enough for for a group of four to infiltrate it and still fight against an extremely light um, amount of enemies. You know what, guys? Let me uh, think that through. It's a difficult decision. I we we started out very well, and it feels that I may be getting too greedy. I would need to think that uh, through and really see what 22 uh, or 25 enemies would be about. Um, also, I would need to read up how fast we can actually extract because I don't want to lose anyone there. Anyways, this is the end of uh, this uh, um, episode. We're going to see each other beginning of the next episode. If you've liked the content um, and enjoyed it, please uh, leave a comment down below. And as always, take care and see you in the next mission. Bye-bye.